Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show how to read uh, UBB's data from an ORCA output file and plot it using Octave. So this data is for a COBAL corolle that uh, for which I did a CASCF calculation. So I'm going to discuss CASCF calculations in future videos. This is uh, not the best example to start with, but basically I just want to show that the CASCF feature in here I'm using 10 electrons in 9 orbitals. This is a cobalt coral, so I have 5 3D metal uh, orbitals and uh, 4 uh, coral orbitals which are around the Homo Lumo gap. So I'm using, uh, I'm calculating for both possible multiplicities, or at least the most likely ones, 3 and 1, and I'm requesting 20 roots for the triplet and 80 roots for the singlet. So I'm choosing this number of roots because previously I, I used a lower number and I'm trying to detect all relevant UVB transitions. So the number of roots is the number of excited states you consider for uh, the calculation of uh, well of the wave function and also for uh, calculating transitions UVBs and circular decreasing. So the other options don't matter. If I go to more or less the end of the file, there are many many different options. So for example, this is a absorption spectrum with spinner with coupling correction, but I'm going to search for this uh, set of data. So the CASCF result, but with a perturbation theory corrected diagonal energies. So for the people who are not familiar with CASCF, don't worry, this is just a calculation I used to obtain this table, which is UVB's data. So parsing a complicated file is quite complicated and also there are many different uh, data in the output file uh, that we can plot. So for now, to make it simpler, I'm just going to copy this portion of the data into a new file. So I call this crawl UV. So I just copy this part to make it easier. In the future, I will try to make a more sophisticated parsing. Uh, so we go to Octave. For those of you who are not familiar with Octave, I have a series of videos on it. I find it very useful. It's a, a calculation environment. It's very similar to MATLAB, but it's a free and open source. It's quite easy to use compared to uh, many other languages. So this is a script that I was using so this data sample is just for checking basically I copied this data manually as a string but I it was just for checking that the program worked we could we can actually forget about this so basically I'm open the file and this is the I am This is the file name corolluv.out that I just made and I'm opening it with fopen and then I'm using the text scan uh, function to read this file. There are many different ways of reading files. There are more there are easier ways, but I want to use this because in the future I can use this text scan feature to do more complicated uh, output file parsing. So basically, this file ID is just a number, but it tells TextScan which is the open file, and it's parsing it 
parsing means basically reading and translating whatever characters into some variable and I'm giving this string which has the format so basically if you look at the format of the UBB's data is somewhat uh, not so easy it has a header that has actually six lines and then at the beginning it has this a uh, transition states which have uh, numbers and other numbers in parentheses and an arrow and have spaces in between so that makes it more complicated to parse so it took me a little while to figure out how to do this automatically you can always edit your files to remove these lines but that adds more steps so it's better to have a routine that can handle different types of formats So basically, what I'm saying is that I'm going to divide my line, basically, in these different formats. F is for floating point number. So all these are floating point numbers. D is for a decimal number or a digit, I think, it would be this for this one. And S is for string and the number 13 gives the uh, number of characters I am using so basically so it tells it to use to take all this data as one string so this number of columns are the columns at the number of columns I have in the file so it's eight no, nine different columns and the limiter I have to say that it will be a tab this is important because as there are some spaces in between uh, the first column it will if it will not recognize it unless we say that we actually wanted the limiter to be a tab and the headlines are six so it will ignore them then what I'm doing is just I check that the third column of of this this is a cell array that data one the third element of the cell array will contain the energies and the fifth element of the cell array will contain the uh, f of oscillator the oscillator strengths which are here so i'm plotting i'm using energies i will plot in a wavelength but i will calculate the spectrum in energies so what I'm saying here is that the number of transitions is the length of the energy's vector. Then I'm choosing a line width in wave numbers. It's basically a, the, an energy a broadening factor. So then I'm defining my x data is basically this will be the wavelengths that I'm plotting from 275 to uh, 1400 uh, nanometers and then I'm transforming X data into from nanometers to wave numbers using this factor it's basically 10 million divided by X data this dot means that the division will be done element wise and then I initialize the Y data vector with zeros with the size of X data so what I'm doing here then, then is to run a loop and I'm basically calculating this is a normalized Gaussian function so the, there's an exponential and then there is a, a basically the x data is the nanometers minus sorry it's not nanometers is wave numbers minus each of the energies energies case like the first energy of the first transition the second transition etc this is squared again the dots mean element wise because x data is a vector so this is divided by the square of the line width and this is multiplied by a prefactor that normalizes the gaussian function then I'm multiplying by the oscillator strength. I just I notice I had a sum before that comes from a um, 
from another previous version of this code that calculated a sum over the transitions tx, ty, tz. I was trying different things. So I changed that. So basically what I'm doing here is calculating each absorption with its intensity and then I add it to the y data vector. So I run this on a loop and then what I do is transform the x data which is in wave numbers back to nanometers but only the x data. So what I plot is the spectrum that was calculated using energies and x data in nanometers. So if I run this you can see this is the uh, calculated spectrum. This is actually quite uh, similar to the experimental spectrum. The error is very low. But so for example I can I can tweak this slightly and change it. I can also change the line width. Then I will see more transitions. I can uh, even broaden it much more. In principle, I could use different line widths for different transitions, but that would require having some idea of why the line widths would change because I have actually many transitions as you can see here. There are many transitions. So if I choose different line widths for all of them, it would be basically guessing and I would have too many parameters. So unless you have a good reason to choose different line widths, it's maybe better to stick to one. It will happen if we put a large line width because this line width is in energies, in energy units or in wavelength. You see that the, it affects differently the broadening of different lines because when you translate this into nanometers, uh, transitions with the lower energy are broadened more by this value than transitions with a higher energy. So if I plot this in energy units, this is then uh, plotting the in a different way. So electronic spectroscopies many uh, a lot of times like to plot this in energy units. I prefer nanometers, but the spectrum should be calculated in energy units. So this could also be used for plotting IR or other types of spectra. So we will probably see that in future videos. The advantage of using something like Octave instead of using the UVB's plotting features of Avogadro or other software is that you can easily uh, you can change a lot of parameters with text and you can save your data so and you can make more complicated programs that for example plot several spectra at the same time i could read i could easily change this program to load data from many different compounds and plot them all together if you want to do that with avogadro you would have to open each file calculate the uvbs choose a certain set of uh, line with, for example, the broadening, export the data, and you would have to do that for each molecule and then combine them in another program like Origin or something or Excel. But here you can actually do it automatically. That's a good thing about using scripting languages instead of using graphical interfaces. So that is all for, for now. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that this has been useful.